for having me, Mandy. That was an awesome question for the first time. So, my talk is called Gospel. And with a name like Daniel Goodman, I think you guys know I don't really come from that school. But when I think Gospel, what I think of is a big group of people standing behind priests singing the praises of God. And anyone who's been to Jazz Fest in New Orleans knows that that's the best tent to go to. And what is it about the gospel that's so powerful, right? Unity, synchronization, harmony, passion, love, all these things. Over this past weekend, I was empowered myself at a really great conference called Dynamic Essentials. And there, the president of Sherman College talked about how we need to share the gospel. And I didn't understand what that meant. In my mind, gospel was a group of people who sing. So I did some research, and it turns out what gospel really means is it's the teachings of Jesus Christ. So when those people are back there, they're singing. They're supporting the principle that they believe in, and when they support their God. Now, I'm not going to get religious as just long as everyone's okay with the concept of how perfect our principle is in chiropractic. And that principle is above, down, inside out, power to make body heals the body, a lot of washed terms. But the point is, is that us as practitioners and as students, what we need to do is we need to share this gospel. We need to share our principle. So that comes to the next step when I talk about the trilogy, the three phases of chiropractic that everyone is so focused <clears throat> on in school, science, philosophy, and art. Even the orientation of these words can sometimes be, you know, a big cause for debate, whether the science is more important or the philosophy or the art. And I definitely have my own take on it. It all starts with philosophy. I was lucky enough to grow up in a chiropractic family, and I didn't know what philosophy was. I never heard that word when related to chiropractic. Philosophy is who you are. It's what you think, it's what you say, it's what you believe in. And you don't have to write it down to know what's really inside of you. The philosophy is what grounds you, though, whether it's in school or when we move on as practitioners into our office, because that's going to dictate the type of people that you're drawn to. So if the type of person you are is someone who wants to work with, you know, scar tissue that needs to be broken up so that athlete can perform at their greatest level, awesome. If your philosophy is so simple as just to remove one subluxation in the atlas to let the body be restored, that's great too. But it should be firm no matter what. When it comes to the science, that's where we share the same thing as all the other medical modalities. We all study the same anatomy books, we're all going to pass our own respective boards, whether it's a dentist or a psychologist, psychiatrist, it doesn't matter. We're all going to learn about radius and all of them. All that stuff. But it is important because for us to scientifically and specifically detect subluxation within the body, it's most certainly in our anatomical and mechanical beings. And to not know that physiology is just irresponsible. You also need to be able to know the right time to refer out to someone else because it's not about us, it's always about the patient. And then the art which is definitely the most popular, I think, probably because it's the most fun, I mean, I love to adjust. But the technique is always dictated by the patient on the table. When you get in front of your own technique or your own art and you get too obsessed with it, then your ego can get in the way and it might, you know, even interfere with the true care that needs to be done for that specific patient. Some people can't get a knee chest adjustment, they might need to sit on some SOT blocks. So the missing step though, which is why I don't really like using this trilogy too much, is that when we talk about science, philosophy, and art, we're circumventing a huge part of what chiropractic's all about. And you can be the most sound adjuster, ace all your boards, and have the most grounded principle out of you know, any chiropractor out there. But when you sit in your office and there's nobody on your table, what'd you miss? You, know, you studied hard, you practiced your arcs, I mean, you read the green books, but there's nobody there. And that's because you haven't communicated this message. You haven't shared the gospel. 
Think about that. We get so obsessed with these three phases that we completely forget to just talk to someone and listen. Now, there's a lot of ways to practice these things, and that's where the work needs to be done. School gives us a great chance to learn everything we need to so that we won't be dangerous chiropractors. And if you take it seriously enough, it'll make you a great chiropractor. But there are places where you can work on this communication so that you can bring people into your office. People are going to be drawn to you for being powerful. And that power could come through any phase of your life. Maybe it is your philosophy. Maybe it is your technique. But they're drawn to people who they trust, who they connect with, who they know loves them. And that's a really, really important step. So when we're talking about connection and communication, there's two phases to it. There's the man, and then there's the message. When you meet somebody, no matter where it is, are you talking chiropractic? Are you exuding every principle that we hold true to our hearts, that we know to be perfect and true, that under chiropractic care you will express better life? and your life will be better for it. My favorite thing to do now is go on airplanes. Seriously, I love it. Because it forces me to be next to one person, because I'll never sit in the middle. But I know that as soon as that conversation starts, I'm just itching, I can't wait to get to, so what do you do? Oh, I'm a chiropractic student. Oh, really? And then I know I'm going to ask them, have you ever been to a chiropractor? And every time, it's always about the message. Because I'm not going to be serving them. Not yet. Not licensed. And who knows where they're going, but wherever they do go, I make sure to give them my information. I make sure to share the message. And I hope that they come to the self-realization that they're going to want to see a chiropractor in their respective area. Because without hearing the message, they'll never know this principle that we should share with everybody. So another way to work on this in school and beyond is there are a lot of places to do it. The Nonviolent Communication <coughs> Club is really helpful. This club is very important. Spanish club. Check it out. <laughs> but really, it's, it's really about that communication and connection because all we have as humans is our expression and our words. Over the past you know, centuries, thousands of years, we've developed these languages, right? And we're lucky enough that English is our base language because we can communicate with more people in the world than anybody. When someone from France meets someone from Japan, they're speaking English. And that's a luxury. Don't take it for granted. So take every opportunity you can to talk to someone and practice just verbalizing what chiropractic is. But it doesn't end there. Just someone's facial expressions, vibrations in the room, putting your hand on someone, there's lots of ways to connect and build that trust. But you have to share the message. You have to. You have to share the gospel. Our only job, our only obligation as chiropractors is to share the gospel. To share the gospel and share the truth and share the principle. Our job is not to convert or convince anybody. It's hard to take in, right? Because we want everyone, I know I do, I know I want them under chiropractic care because their life and humanity would be better for it. But that's only going to come from self-realization and decision for that person. Just like when we give our adjustment and we let the body do the healing, we can't be attached to the outcome. So when you share that message, you can't be attached to the outcome either. Dr. Steve Judson, who's an amazing chiropractor out of Connecticut, spoke this weekend about how he's okay with people who aren't under chiropractic care. He can live with that. But what's not okay is that they haven't heard the message and that they don't understand our principle. You can't convince anyone to do anything. You can't. You can try. You can be really persuasive, persistent, even aggressive. But it has to come from them. So share the gospel. Be strong to your philosophy. And 
and tell everyone you can about what it is we really do. I love and appreciate all of you.